also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video for more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below hello people so now we look at the next topic from the same signals and system so already we have seen that uh, how are we representing signals we learned about systems then we saw about lti systems and that only lti systems can be model it is possible to model only lti systems to operate on lti systems right then we saw pro uh, that to find the output of a lti system we are using convolution right but in the starting we discussed that to represent the system we are having various ways right we are having impulse response using impulse response we can define a system completely using convolution we can find the output of the system and so on now we are looking at another way we are looking at laplace transformer which is applied to continuous time lti systems okay see why are we learning about laplace transformers we saw that convolution uh, performing convolution for a continuous time systems was a bit lengthy bit uh, of a tedious task in some cases in some systems right so we uh, we, we are represent we are providing an alternate representation for signals and systems okay representation for signals as well as systems in another domain in L, uh, in laplace domain okay so we are uh, going to represent these signals and systems in s domain so right where s is a complex variable so basically we are in uh, laplace domain we are going to represent the signals and systems in signals and systems lti systems are going to be represented in s domain s domain okay what is s here s is a complex variable s is a complex variable what does a complex variable means if i just need to represent this s in terms of real and imaginary part i can write it as sigma plus j omega right so this s is a complex variable and uh, the concept of the system function for a continuous lti system we are going to introduce okay so uh, we are going to see how we are finding laplace transform of a signal and how are we using it see when we performing convolution so we saw that sometimes it's becoming tedious to perform convolution of two signals okay now when we introduce this concept of laplace transform convolution operation is going to become simple multiplication operation in s domain right convolution of two signals in time domain is equivalent to performing simple multiplication operation in s domain that is the reason why we are trying to study laplace transform okay to ease our task fine so we saw that we have already seen that uh, in for if for a continuous time lti system which has impulse response ht then if we are applying input as complex exponential input suppose i am applying suppose what am i saying is if my input is of the form e to the power st which we call as eigen function of a system right we talked about eigen functions so what did we what did we do output yt we could write as output yt is going to be if this input is applied to the system then we are getting the output as yt we saw that this is of the same form this is of the form of input only except for this eigen value this constant value or eigen value now how are we calculating this hs this hs we said that this is going to be equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity ht e to the power minus st dt right this is this is what my hs was right so what are we saying is this hs is actually the laplace transform of ht right this hs is the laplace transform of ht this is how we are defining laplace transform for a signal so what can i say for a general signal for a general signal xt i can say that its laplace transform which is xs is going to be equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity xt e to the power minus st dt fine 
that is uh, any signal for to find out Laplace transform for any general signal xt what do I have to do integrate signal xt with multiplication with e to the power minus st over complete range from minus infinity to infinity fine this is how you're defining Laplace transform of a general signal okay uh, now see this Laplace transform that we have defined is also called is generally it is bilateral or two-sided Laplace transform okay there are two types see this one is this one is going to be bilateral bilateral or what do I say two-sided bilateral or two-sided Laplace transform right we are defining two types of Laplace transform one is going to be bilateral bilateral means limits of the integration are from minus infinity to infinity that is where we are calling it as bilateral or two-sided Laplace transform uh, one more Laplace that we are defining is unilateral unilateral which means only one side unilateral unilateral Laplace transform or one-sided one-sided Laplace transform okay how are we defining it just changing the limits of integration limits of integration are going to become from 0 to infinity okay we are not including the negative time instances if if we are performing this kind of uh, Laplace transform we are finding this kind of Laplace transform it is known as unilateral Laplace transform so we are defining two types of Laplace transform bilateral and unilateral now see these bilateral and unilateral transforms are going to be equivalent going to be the same if my signal xt is causal signal right so what can I say if my signal if xt is a causal signal causal signal which means that xt is 0 for t less than 0 if xt itself is 0 for t less than 0 that is if it is a causal signal then bilateral and unilateral bilateral and unilateral transforms are going to be equivalent forms are going to be equivalent 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 means they're going to be the same right so bilateral and unilateral transforms are going to be equivalent if you're considering a causal signal okay so uh, generally we're talking about bilateral transforms only so we'll uh, just look at unilateral transforms in one separate section later on right so to represent Laplace transform of a signal sometimes they're using some signal uh, some some representation like this which signifies that xs is going to be the Laplace transform of xt okay and uh, the, these xt and xs they are known as Laplace transform pair Laplace transform pair which means that xs is going to be the Laplace transform of this signal and xt is going to be the inverse Laplace of this signal so they together are known as Laplace transform pair Right, so the next uh, concept that we are going to look at is region of convergence. Okay, now what is region of convergence? See, when we are defining this Laplace transform, for Laplace transform of a signal to be defined, to be, to be properly evaluatable, right, what is the condition, right, there are going to be a range of values of the complex variable S. We discussed about this complex variable S, right, we have, uh, we are, what are we doing is we are representing signals in system in the s domain so the range of values of this s for which laplace transform converges okay what is a region of convergence actually range of values of range of values of s for which for which laplace transform converges is going to be is called the region of convergence region of convergence of laplace transform or roc region of convergence or roc okay uh, so i can explain this with an example just look at an example suppose we have a signal we have a signal e to the power minus at ut 
okay where a is, is some real number right so if i am interested in finding the laplace transform of the signal xs then what is according to the definition what is going to be its laplace transform integration from minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus at into ut into e to the power minus st dt this is how we've defined laplace transform right this is how we're going to find out laplace transform in the function now what is this going to be limits i can modify from 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity. Why? Because the, this function is having ut, right? And this, so the complete thing is going to be defined only for values of t greater than or equal to 0. And this I can write as, combinedly I can write as e to the power minus s plus a into t dt, right? Now if you just perform this integration, you're going to get e to the power minus s plus a upon minus s plus a. And we are having the limits from 0 to infinity. Fine. So if I try to put the limits in, see what is going to happen. I am having here E minus S plus A into infinity. That is E to the power minus S plus A into 0. Right? This is what is going to happen. Now see, what we are saying is, see for this limit to be 0, for this upper limit, to become 0 right if if this see what we are saying is if this s plus a is a negative number if this s plus a is a negative number this complete power is going to become a positive power and we are going to have e to the power plus infinity which is going to be infinite then this laplace transform cannot be defined right this cannot be defined this definition is not going to be valid laplace transform is not going to converge so if we want this term to become 0, it is necessary that this s plus a should be positive. Only when this s plus a is positive, this power of this e is going to become negative minus infinity and this term is going to become 0. Right? This is how we are defining some values of a, some range of values of this s for which Laplace transform can converge. Right? So what can I say? This is going to be minus 1 by s plus a into 0 minus 1 which is going to be 1 by s plus a but only when s plus a is greater than 0 or what can i say about uh, s from here how can i define the roc i can say that the real part of s should be greater than minus a right so only when this happens this laplace transform can be defined okay so this is how we can find roc right region of convergence for a laplace transform the values of s for which the laplace transform converges okay have has some finite value uh, now see basically we are having this s s is a complex variable which is defined as sigma plus j omega okay okay so if we try to draw a s plane okay to represent this what we are doing is On the x-axis, we are having this real part of uh, S, which is sigma. And on the y-axis, I am representing values of j omega. So, this is going to be my S plane. Okay, this is how we are representing the S plane. Okay. Now, to represent the ROC of uh, a system, like if we take for the previous example, see, we had ROC, which said that real part of S should be greater than minus A. Okay. And uh, in the problem, it was given that A is a real number. So, what can I say? Real part of S means sigma, right? So, if I here, somewhere here, minus A is going to lie. Now, what do I need? This is going to be my boundary line, okay? This is my boundary line. Now, I've considered A is greater than 0. That is why minus A lies here, okay? So, now, what happens is, if I need that real part of S should be greater than minus A, then what is, how can I sketch the ROC for the system? This is going to be my ROC. Okay. And in case when A is less than 0. If, if A is less than 0. Then I am going to have minus A somewhere here. Okay. And then. This is how my ROC is going to look like. Okay. To the right side of this line, right side of line, sigma is equal to minus a, right? 
so there can be two conditions either a is positive or negative based on them we are having two iroc for the given uh, example for the given signal fine so uh, this is how you're representing iroc in the s plane so we can take one more example so that uh, things are going to be a little bit more clear suppose we have given okay we can take it in a fresh place suppose you are given a signal xt is equal to minus e power minus a t u of minus t again they have given that a is a real number now if you just try to find out its laplace transform again x s it is going to be integration minus infinity to infinity minus e to the power minus a t u minus t e to the power minus s t dt now see this u of minus t is going to have values only for values of t from minus infinity to zero. So I can modify the limits from minus infinity to zero, and uh, I'm taking this minus sign common. So I'm going to have minus a plus s t dt. Right? Again, if I just perform this integration, I'm going to obtain upon right one minus was already there, so it's going to vanish going to become plus limits from minus infinity to zero now if you just put the limit this is going to be minus a plus s into zero minus e to the power minus a plus s into minus infinity upon s plus a now if you look clearly for this limit to be zero for this uh, portion to become zero this this power should be negative power already we are having two minus signs now for the power to be negative for the power to be minus infinity what do i need i need that this s plus a should be a negative number okay only then my laplace transform is going to converge and what it is going to be then it is going to be one minus zero upon s plus a so what can i say laplace transform is going to be one by s plus a but when s plus a is a negative number or i can say that real part of s is less than minus a okay now again if i just uh, try to sketch this roc in the s plane how am i going to do this so again this is my sigma axis this is the j omega axis again we're going to consider two cases right so if a is a positive number this is what minus a is going to be this is when a is a positive number right now what do i need i need that real part of s should be less than minus a so this is what my roc is going to look like and in case a is a in case a is a negative number then minus a is going to lie somewhere here and ROC is going to be something like this. Okay, so see one thing that you can note here is even when my signal was e to the power minus eighty ut, which is a right-handed signal, a causal signal, I had. I had Laplace transform as 1 by s plus a and when my signal was e to the power minus a t u minus t which is a left handed single signal or a anti causal signal even then Laplace transform was the same I obtained the same value. <coughs> now how do you differentiate what makes the difference between these two is the ROC. ROC for these two functions is completely different completely opposite okay. So that is why defining ROC along with the Laplace transform of signal is very important. Only when you define ROC for a signal you can define the Laplace transform uniquely. Right. So what can I say? I can just write at uh, as a note. This is a note. In order in order for the Laplace transform to be unique for the Laplace transform to be unique for each signal for each signal the ROC must be specified as a part of the transform okay must be specified along with the transform Right, only when you are specifying this ROC along with the transform, you specify the Laplace transform uniquely, right. 